this video, we're going to be tackling the sort colors lead code problem. And as usual, let's go ahead and let's jump right in and figure out what exactly does lead code want. In order to understand this problem, it's important that we take a step back. We talk about the history of this problem a bit because this question, this problem, was invented by a very famous computer scientist called Dijkstra. Now, this is called the Dutch national flag problem. Kind of a corny name, but I didn't invent it. What they want you to do is they want you to sort corresponding zeros, ones, and twos so that they are in order. That's all they want. They call it the Dutch national flag problem, but what they really want is they want you to take an array that is unsorted, that is composed of zeros, ones, and twos, and they want you to sort it so that it looks like this, corresponding zero zeros, one ones, and two twos. Why do they call it the Dutch national flag? Because these numbers line up in the corresponding color. So zeros is reds, white is, or ones are white, twos are blues, and they want you to line them up so that they correspond to the Dutch national flag in that order. I don't know. I didn't make up the problem's name. It's kind of corny, but it is what it is. We didn't make it up. We're just solving this thing. So how exactly are we going to solve this? This algorithm can be solved. This Dutch national flag algorithm that Dijkstra invented is pretty much a, a really fancy three-pointer. It's a three-pointer with a cute little hat on top of it. It's, that's literally all that it is. It's just a three-pointer problem. It sounds really intimidating, but that's, that's really all it is. So if we look at this array right here, this is just a really easy example of an array, a possible array that we could sort. If you look at this, how would you get the ones into the middles and the twos on the ends? All, the zeros are already sorted. So if we go through this and we just you know, go through one by one, we need to get it so that the ones are in the middle and the twos are at the end. How would you do it? Well, these zeros are already taken care of. So we go, we've already got this one taken care of. We already got this one taken care of. How would you get this two to the end? Well, you would probably just swap it. You could swap it for the two or you could swap it for the one. You'd probably swap it for the one. So next thing we, we would do is we would probably swap it with the two. That's pretty much it. We just go swap the two right here, put the one right here, and boom, our, we've got our Dutch national flag, and that's pretty much it. But how are we going to do this with an algorithm? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to have our three pointers here, and we're going to go through one by one. We're going to have these the low and the mid move toward the middle, and we're going to have the high move toward the middle as well too. It's just going to do so in an opposite direction. You may be asking yourself, well, why is why does the mid exist on the left? Well, we have to slowly get these numbers towards the middle. This is an easy example, but what if we had ones and twos right here? Our mid is theoretically in the front right now. And if we had the mid pointer already at the middle, how are we going to sort our lows? So we're going to have three pointers we're going to have two lows on the left, and we're going to have one pointer, the high, on the absolute right. And we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to look at zero. Zero is already in place, so that we don't need we need we don't need to do anything with that one. This zero is already in place, so we don't need to do anything with this one. But here's where things get interesting. What's going to happen is we're going to get what we're going to get to number two. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch we're going to switch the two and the two, but they're the same, so it's not really going to make much of a difference. So we're going to switch the two and the two, and that's pretty much it. And then we're going to move this one down. Then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to switch them. So the two and the one are going to be switched, and that's pretty much it. That's exactly how the algorithm works. And we don't need to go any further because everything's already taken care of. So that seems pretty easy. It's a little bit more technical as we get into things, but let's just go ahead, hop over into IntelliJ. I guarantee you it'll make a lot more sense. So we are inside of IntelliJ, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a brand new class. I'm going to call this solution, and I'm going to place this solution class within the same folder where the main file is at. You could call it something totally different. You could put it anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create what's called a swap. A swap is just a coding pattern that you're going to see quite often in leak code. Anytime that you have to swap numbers or anytime that you have to 
manipulate an array in place, you're going to have to do a swap. And let's just say we want to swap the two and the zero. We would just swap them just like that. We would do it in place with the exact same array that we pass into the swap. And that's the whole entire idea of what a swap actually is. And it's so common that I would just Google this. If you ever need to do a swap, I would just Google it. And eventually you will memorize it because you use it so often. But if you're not familiar with what a swap is, let the AI handle it. But remember that you're probably, if you're in an interview scenario, you're probably gonna have to remember that, but you will remember it with time because you're going to be doing swaps quite often. So next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to actually create the method for the uh, sort colors. So we're gonna be sorting the colors we're going to be taking taking in an integer array of nums. We're going to declare three pointers. So we're going to say int low, int medium, or mid, sorry. And we're going to say int high. Pretty simple there. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a while loop that's going to stop once the, me, the mid and the high actually cross over each other. So if the mid and the high cross over each other, we want this while loop to stop executing. So we've got our state, we've got our pointers figured out, we've got our iteration figured out. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to actually code the algorithm that's going to do all of the checks. And we're going to be checking for zeros, we're going to be checking for ones, and we're going to be checking for twos. So we also need to do swaps, but let's just take everything step by step and talk about this uh, one piece at a time. So let's just talk about if the mid is equal to zero, we're going to swap and then we're going to move the low and the uh, mid pointer up. So what does that actually look like? Well, first things first, if it's zero, which it is in this case, if mid is equal to zero, all of this whole entire algorithm is based off what exactly mid is. We've got our state figured out. We've got our pointers set for the, our low and our mid set for the first element. We've got our high set for the last element. So what if mid is equal to zero? Well, we, we're gonna go ahead, switch zero with zero because the low and the mid are the exact same thing. Then we're going to move it up. And that's exactly what our algorithm communicates. So we swap the low and the mid, and then we move the low and the mid pointers up. Pretty simple. Next thing that, we get, that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do our else if, and we're going to check if the mid is equal to uh, one. The AI is trying to do two, but it's actually one. And in this case, it's uh, not as intensive. All anything that we're going to do is just, we're, we're just going to shift the mid pointer up. So let's go ahead, let's go back to the whiteboard. So if this were a one right here, we wouldn't really do anything except shift the mid up, but it's actually a zero. So we're just gonna go ahead change it back and that's, per, that's a pretty easy one to kind of uh, think about in your head but what about the else the else is a little bit more complicated the else we're going to do a swap of course and we need to make sure that these swaps are correct we want the low and the high for the uh, zero swap and or we want the low and the mid for the zero swap and we want the mid and the high for the high swap or the two and the only thing that's going to happen is we're just going to decrement the high so let's just go ahead, let's think about what this looks like on the actual uh, board here. So if the mid is two, what we're going to do is we're going to swap the mid and the high. And we have a case in our actual array here where we have uh, a mid that's equal to two. So if the mid is equal to two, we're going to swap it with the high and the high is two as well too. And then we're going to move the high down. And that's pretty much how the whole entire algorithm uh, works. It's actually not that complicated. It's so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of the code within the actual method. We have two separate methods right here. So I'm just going to kind of put them in there separately to ensure that we don't make any mistakes. So the first um, method, we're going to go ahead and paste all that in. But remember, we still got to do the swap. So let's go down here. I'm going to grab all of the swap, including the actual method. And then I'm going to go down here, place it below the actual sort colors method that we have spruce it up a little bit make sure that it looks good let's go ahead run it we have our test cases are accepted let's go ahead hit the submit button see what our time complexity is uh, our time complexity is n which is awesome our memory is e is going to equal uh constant we have passed the interview anyways hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to smash that like button smash that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching